today, mental illness is a real struggle for our generation. But how significant was this struggle in past centuries? One of Shakespeare's most regarded texts is the story of Hamlet, where many of the characters dealt with some sort of mental illness and handled it in a variety of ways. So this got us thinking, did treatment for mental illness positively or negatively affect the people of Hamlet's time period, which is also known as the late Middle Ages? But before we go any further, what really is mental illness? Mental illness is a wide range of conditions that can affect mood, thinking, and behavior. It can be brought on by biological, physiological, and environmental factors that can affect anyone. In the play Hamlet, Hamlet himself is said to be suffering with madness, another term for mental illness that in his case was demonstrated in the struggles with depression and suicidal thoughts. Ophelia, another primary character, also suffered from madness, dealing with feelings of helplessness and loss of identity after her father's death. Numerous other characters also had varying degrees of mental illness, demonstrating Shakespeare's familiarity with the mental illness present during the Middle Ages. We hypothesize that if people were treated back in the Middle Ages for mental illness, then the treatments were ineffective and had often a negative impact on those being treated. Let's take a look at some of those treatments. The most widely believed philosophy during the Middle Ages, the soul governed the body. This belief was influenced heavily by the religious influence of the churches and led to the scientific findings from Greece and Rome being forgotten. Nicholas Orosme, a significant philosopher in the late Middle Ages, thought that demons were the cause of most mental illnesses, a not uncommon theory at this time. Other than demonic possession, witchcraft, hysteria, and stress were all causes of mental illnesses. Treatments for the illnesses include exorcism, hearing mass, and drinking a cold glass of water. This was to try and make the demon so uncomfortable it would leave the body, but only if coaxing the demon out and insulting the demon didn't work. You just heard, the church treated all mental illness in a spiritual context, using exorcisms and other methods to try and chase demons away, usually leaving the actual cause of mental illnesses untreated. Other forms of treatment in the Middle Ages included the use of laxatives, blood-sucking leeches, and special aloes, all for the purpose of bringing balance back by cleansing the body of depression. Another treatment type involved throwing a mentally ill person into ice-cold water to shock them back to their senses. Those who had mental disorders were treated using a variety of different methods depending on the physician that you went to. Some doctors believe that supernatural forces such as witches, demons, or possessions cause mental disorders. These physicians believe that prayers and incantations along with exorcisms would cure the sick and relieve them of their suffering. This eventually led to the development of trephining, which was a means of treating what today would probably be considered as epilepsy by drilling a hole in the patient's skull. It was believed that any evil spirit or evil air would flow out of the body through the hole and leave the patient in peace. Now I don't know about you, but I don't think a hole in the skull is going to do any good for treating any illness. Sometimes, when all other treatments failed, the only solution was to accept the suffering as part of your punishment. For example, when the Black Plague hit Europe in the 14th century and wiped out nearly half of the population, people saw that as a direct punishment from God and that the only way to get rid of the plague was to suffer. So much so that you literally had people going outside inflicting pain on themselves voluntarily to increase their suffering and hopefully getting God to have mercy on them for doing that. These people, they were called flagellants and were quite common in the late medieval era. If that is not shocking enough, there are other more extreme examples of treatments for brain disorders, as well as the description what some people would inflict on themselves in hopes that their self-induced suffering could convince God to heal them from their own afflictions. So some of the extreme ways that people treated mental illness, or madness as it was often called in the Middle Ages. Knowing what we know today, it is easy to see that these treatments were mostly ineffective, causing more pain than what, what they were supposed to relieve. As a result, people found no relief from their mental issues and thus often harmed or even committed suicide out of desperate need to end their suffering. In conclusion, while treatments for mental illness did exist in the Middle Ages, these treatments were extremely ineffective and often negatively impacted those being treated.